you know, today's topic is about digital business transformation. Okay, so this is the overall overarching main theme for Cisco Life, and it's not only that. Everybody, every industry, everywhere is talking about it. So before we, you know, get too deep into it, I figured let's go. Anything and everything today is digital. You know, wherever you turn around. So I figured let's go to the internet, get some uh, examples, and see, uh, you know, which are the kind of industries that are doing it. So on the left, you see here, this is a clothing company, Ethos. I don't know if you're familiar with it. They manufacturing exercise wear. They manufacture exercise wear, and um, this is not your, uh, you know, simple shorts that measures the temperature of your body. It's packed with sensors. So the guy here who's lifting barbells has a screen right in front of him, and it's instantaneously giving him feedback as to which muscles he's exercising, so that he can adjust the way he exercises based on that. So that's clothing industry employing digital, okay? Shoes, Nike has done this for a long time. They've embedded technology into shoes, but this is taking it to the next level, hyper adapt. This shoe auto laces itself and, and adjusts itself every few milliseconds or seconds. So as you're running, when your foot is up versus foot is down, you know, it does it. So I, it'll be a while before I use the shoe, but still there are a lot of people who like it. Finally, even toilets are going digital. Now, I read the article, I don't want to go through the details of what's digital about it, but basically you get the idea. A <laughs> lot of stuff, everybody is talking about digital, right? Tell so the whitewashing starts, as usual, bright, shiny marketing and all that stuff. Everybody, you take 3D printing, machine learning, this, that and all that stuff, right? So if you feel like this, you're not alone. A lot of us feel like this. It's, is it, it's confusing what is real here and all that stuff. So that's why today I'm going to talk about three things. I have with me my co-speaker Pradeep as well. I'm going to uh, present digital uh, transformation in terms of, you know, things that actually we can bring value in terms of companies and businesses. And more so what I'm going to look at is not digital for the sake of digital, but what, what are the companies of today, what are they investing in, wh and what do they define the subcategories of digital transformation in the next 12 to 18 months. So let's try to understand that a little bit. Uh, that'll be a small introduction, and then I want to go more into the technology platform and um, talk about the attributes if you are uh, you know, helping your company convert into a digital business, what are the attributes from a technology platform angle you need to think about in different areas? So uh, my presentation is going to be more at a designer architectural level because it's not meant, I'm not going to sit and tell you how to design the exact network. That is a follow on thing. This is an architecture questions. And then there are solutions that come towards this, which Pradeep will talk about. So. Before we go further, so let me, as I said, I'll introduce myself later. So my name is Srivat Sandesikan, and um, I lead the digital business trans transformation marketing strategy at Cisco. So my background, I've spent uh, 20, I've been 20 years in the industry. I've spent mostly my life as a programmer. I have uh, worked in six verticals, predominantly in IT departments, taking technology and applying it to business problems, farmers insurance, Pfizer pharmaceuticals, all, all these places, right? So. I get excited about technology, but only as much as it drives value in business. So you'll see a lot of my talk will be around, around that stuff. The second thing I've done is I've started four startups. Uh, two of them failed, uh, and, but two of them went well. The latest one I've done is um, you know is a company called Cloud Multiply, which I sold to a provider in Europe. It's about um, you know it was the first IT as a service broker um, uh, company, and uh, we built stuff on OpenStack and uh, Docker and SaaSification. Um, and from a other perspective, I have a lot of technical certification, and I have a Sun certification from the old, I was Java architect, uh, I have Oracle certifications on DBA and all of that stuff. So, so if you have technical questions around IT, software development and all that, I can answer that. More on routing and switching, Pradeep is the expert there. Okay, makes sense? All right, so <clears throat> let's start with the, what is digital uh, transformation and more importantly, why is that important? So, you know, if people, present to you as a digital business transformation is something new, it means they have no clue about what they're talking about. This is not new. We've known this forever. You know, in the past, when the punch cards went to magnetic tapes, that's some sort of transformation. When, uh, you know, telegraph into telephone, that's again a sort of transformation because what happens is your business model changes. Your, your incumbents making punch cards ran out of the business if they didn't realize. You know, same thing with happened with, uh, you know, Polaroid and all these cameras as well. So transformation has been happening in the past. Today's world, we can see I have a 10-year-old. He comes home. He doesn't bring any homework at home through paper. It's all through accelerated reader online and uh, education industries transforming. Hospitality. This is very interesting. So 
that's you typically when you go to a hospital you expect to see a reception and you expect to talk to a human this is a hospital in belgium they don't have any any human in the front desk it's all these robots roaming around and you go check in with the robot provides all information if there's any any excess details needed a person pops up here and has a live conversation with you so uh, technology is starting to creep in terms of transformation uh, in these areas why are they doing that it's simple the business outcome is better customer experience you don't have to wait in long lines so the, again, I'll always emphasize not technology for the sake of technology, but what sort of business value it's driving. Otherwise, we just talked about Wave and a few other products that come and just go. Future is going to happen. Already 3D printing is happening in Cisco Live. You can see that uh, they have one small demo, but uh, you know this is this is going mainstream. G right now has just received uh, approval from Federal Aviation Authority to manufacture aircraft nozzles within the engine. This is not your handle in the airplane. This is the nozzle that's basically running your engine. That's a very important part. 3D printing, right? And same with uh, you know driverless cars. I'm waiting for this. I live in San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. This would be great. But anyway, you get the idea. So the question is not as not what is digital business transformation. The question is what does it mean today? And like I said, what I've done is I've looked at a lot of analysts and other people, uh, you know, strategy consulting firms, what they've said. But also I looked at a lot of data of deals that have taken place for the last 12 months and also data about where CEOs are saying they're going to invest money in the next 12 to 18 months. That is relevant for us today. Right, And if you look at that, the three overarching themes that come in terms of defining what digital business transformation is around centered around three capabilities. One is build new and personalized customer experiences from retail industries to banking industry to hospital. All of them are focused on that. Significant projects, large dollars are being in, invested in building better customer experiences in, in these verticals. Why? It increases loyalty, greater insight. Transform process, this is more of the manufacturing sector. They've always wanted faster, better, and cheaper, right? So they are looking, the biggest problem for manufacturers is they are repeatedly subjected to disintermediation. A new technology, new manufacturing method comes in and suddenly it wipes out their business. So they are looking at how do they transform process, the business models, the value chain, and you know, uh, get faster to market. And finally, everyone now is f focusing on workforce efficiency and innovation. It's not that there is a rush for talent now that has never been there before. It's always hard to get a CCI certified person, right, or any other certified person. But the the reason there's a lot of work being done is the new generation of people who are coming to the workforce, like, uh, you know, they've been growing with uh, iPads and they don't believe in coming into the office. So the office structure today is still based, predicated on the fact that you have to come in. So a lot of workforce experience from lighting to being able to work from everywhere and all those initiatives have become a reason why a person or not will join the company. So again, these three are the predominant digital business transformation projects most companies across verticals are investing in. Okay? So, how, how important is this? This is just a number slide, but um, you know, data is data. Gartner said that about 40% of revenues in 2019 is going to come out of uh, some sort of a digital transformation projects. And so, companies in 2015 itself, CEOs have started increasing their investment in this area. So, specific, they have specific budgets, specific around this area. Again, I, the reason I put the slide is more when I present a lot to the sales guys because the sales guy is always looking, okay, this is all fine. It looks good. It's a nice uh, article to read. I need to close quota in the next three months. Is this a real thing I need to pursue or not? So this is real. It's going mainstream in the maturity curve. So if you look at some category leaders of companies in the verticals that have done good digital business transformation projects, here are some examples. I won't go through all. I'll just go through one. My favorite is UPS. And um, in all, some are Cisco examples and some are not, but uh, I put this because these are the best representative examples in the industry. What UPS did, the number one problem in the delivery industry, we can all relate to this, is what? You have a package coming, you call UPS, they said, sure, sir, it'll arrive any time between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And you need to be there. If not, you have to go and pick the package from our center. Number one reason for customer dissatisfaction, and this problem has been there for almost 15 years or 20 years. So UPS finally solved that problem 
by building a my my uh, ups my choice of app mobile app they connected it with their supply chain systems and the transportation tracking systems so now they are able to give you a smaller 2 to 3 hour window when the driver will be there and even when you're getting there let's say last minute you're not able to maybe make it they've given you the ability to directly message the driver and provide delivery instruction alternate delivery instructions now why is this important it's not just technology. What they've done is if you look at their value chain, the customer is one extremity of the value chain. The, the another extremity is the guy who's delivering the package and third is the supplier. They've connected all the extremities of their value chain and when they could do that, they can they can come up with better business way of functioning or uh, design better business design and so they will they increase customer satisfaction. The results are really good. They've gotten a lot more uh, you know bulk contracts in terms of people who use UPS. Boeing did asset tracking, Six million parts go into manufacturing in 747 in the world's largest building by volume. They calculated the data of, uh, you know, when a part goes missing, they lose about a million dollars because it stops the entire uh, assembly line, which they have. If you've gone to the, been to the Boeing plant, there's multiple planes being manufactured simultaneously. So these are, all, again, technology that adds value to business. So that's, that's what you need to think in terms of digital transformation. It's not an IT project. It's not a line of business project. It's when they come together to drive business value. Otherwise, it'll, it'll just be a failure of a project. Now, that is all stuff that is happening today. The predominant projects that you'll be seeing in terms of digital transformation in most companies are like Wayne Gretzky said, the hockey player, right? Skate to where the puck is. That this is where the puck is going. If you take these three industries, manufacturing, retail, and banking, uh, this is where they're going. Manufacturing, we talked about additive manufacturing, which is 3D printing, consumer as creators, where you know the consumer is able to design something. I'll show you an example on Harley Davidson. They did that. BMW, BMW does that. You can make design changes and they are able to you know, accommodate that without the need to completely redo their, retool their machines and all that stuff. Okay. Lights out factories. A lot of companies are going where it's called light, lights out of factories. Basically, the only human there is a security guard. Everything is uh, automated. Again, why cost pressures in that industry? Retail, this is, this is really great. In retail, the entire uh, knowledge in a you know, strategy of retail is predicated on bringing the customer inside the store. Right? That's why you have grocery store having loss leader strategies, pricing Coke very cheap, even at a loss to make margins on other products. Amazon, Microsoft with HoloLens, they've, they're turning that entire basis. They're saying, don't come into the store. We'll bring the store to you. So with virtual reality, I saw there's one Oculus Rift here. Uh, you're able to basically get to the store sitting in your room. So that completely changes the basis of competition and all of them. So an incumbent coming in with that will, will be able to. An exam, classic example is Amazon Prime now. Two hours, you get stuff. And with the drones, all of these things are going to happen. Banking, a lot of things are changing. Imagine a world where there is no cash at all. It's not that far. Sweden today, 95% of their retail stores don't accept cash. Only 2% of their economy is cash. And most banks are ripping out ATMs and everything out of their uh, facility, right? And so Denmark is not to be one up of their neighbor. They've gone and the government has a stated goal by 2030, they're going to eradicate all cash. So imagine the financial, if I'm a bank, I love this because there's so much more new customers. So many people who are not part of the banking system are not in the banking system. If I'm gov uh, government, I love it because less money laundering and less uh, all of that stuff. So it's a win-win. So the, these are the kind of things. The reason I brought these up is when you look at companies with digital transformation projects, it's going to start now. It's taking going to take a year or so or two. This is what they're aiming towards. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop here before I jump into now what technology platform and how do you get there if there's any questions on the topic per se. Nothing. Okay, perfect. So now, now I, hopefully I've given you an idea and consider that it's about technology that drives business value. Now let's look at these and I've given you some examples to show you that these are not one-off projects here or there. It's not asset tracking, only asset tracking. It's about whole modernization of supply chain, end-to-end -end process, right? So now if you want to build something, you don't want to build piecemeal investments on this. You want to start with a good foundation. And so let's look at from a, if I'm an architect, what are the um, attributes of a foundation pl platform that I will look for? So if you look at all of these transformational in initiatives, I think basically there are five capabilities you need to look at. One, like I said, um, the ability to connect every extremity of your value chain. 
if you if you don't even connect you can't begin to transfer so think about an offshore oil platform there are sensors corrosion sensors and below the uh, you know the oil well in in gulf of mexico say be able to and then there's crude sensors whenever crude gets pumped up the crude is sam sampled uh, constantly but the expert who analyzes the crude is sitting in some other city and the head office is that the ability for them to instantaneously connect and make a decision saying this is good quality crude let's continue pumping out or just let's cap this well and move to some other part of the basin so these are the kind of things you need to connect every extremity of, of the value chain again farming industry look at chiquita bananas they grow stuff in uh, south america bananas have have a two week period before when they will get spoiled so they have to manage the supply chain and the demand such that the bananas reach your local gro safe grocery store at the right time so the ability to make sure that they are able to be connected with the crate while it's so in uh, south america down to the ocean when it's in through satellite and all of that that connectivity is very important right once you do that then you have the the other pieces that come into the place you've connected different endpoints what you've basically done is you've increased your attack surface we you know uh, uh, recently there was an incident with a big company where uh, the hvac contractor got access into their network broke into their financial side of the stuff stole credit card data and it was a big it was not a, a, a good thing for the company so the the idea is it's don't think of security as an afterthought it should be ingrained in the network so security is important so you have connectivity you have able been able to connect every extremity of your value chain you have been able to secure all of that now your people or machines can start collaborating okay once you do that great right not so great i i used to uh, i built the entire web application infrastructure for uh, california public employee retirement system in sacramento and uh, these were the days when you know I was working with a product. Uh, the product would crash every now and then. I had to come in several nights. Got called into, and I spent a lot of my nights in the data center. Now imagine, as a guy, as an engineer, or as a person, as a maintenance person, you we just went from thousands of endpoints to managing millions of endpoints. It's not possible to manage all this manually anymore. So. that again a guiding design principle you need to have automation at every level and i don't need to check everything if there's something that can be automatically uh, fixed by the system based on rules it should happen containers a container fails why should i come and say and reboot one there's a container pool another one should take its place through uh, the clustering and distribution so these are the kinds of automation at, at every level that's a data center there's automation at every level there are sensors we have duplicate sensors in critical um, uh, you know aircraft and all the uh, quadruple uh, uh, you know fly by wire stuff and all that so if one sensor goes fine ignore the data and then start using other sensors these are the kinds of automation policies and rules so, so now automation and finally when you do all this now you get to the point where you're relevant to the line of business guy you have data that you can see from every extremity of your business now you're able to get that data so now you can look at trends and say how do i want to modify my business can okay, i'll give you an example levis had this big issue where they they would have a certain size of jeans that was not selling in certain geographies but on the other uh, end of the state or something or a different part of the country it, there is a shortage why because people are of different sizes there are demographic groups of different sizes so uh, a jeans sitting in a shelf not selling is is the waste of shelf shelf space and loss of orders right and on the other side it's loss of business so when you do this if you can connect everything you can know the inventory levels what's coming down they can decide the next shipment of jeans 40 by 29 goes to this geography 31 by 34 goes to that geography right so these are the kind of things they can start doing that is transformation that's digital business transformation right okay so what are the design considerations so now this is going just one step deeper from an architecture perspective if i am the vp of networking and saying okay my company has decided to go digital fine that's all okay but what do i need to do what should i do in the network so that my ceo doesn't come and say you know you're fired because you don't know how to build a network for the next uh, digital era so it's not about what specific router or switch i use what are the principles again these are the principles and i've covered some of these so i i will leave this for you guys to see but 
Bottom line, can I connect millions of endpoints to each every part of my business? Can I rapidly detect and isolate threats? Can I automate it? Can I provide the same service level on the offshore pl oil platform as well as as good as the main office, etc., and all of that? So these are the design con consideration for network. If you look at security, like you said, this the attack surface is increased. So it's about there are a joke about security industry. You guys probably know there are companies that know that they've been attacked and companies that the, the companies that have been attacked and companies that don't know that if they've been attacked. So everybody gets attacked, right? So it's not you. You don't sit and say no engineer in sane uh, mind will say oh you know I'm I built a foolproof system, right? The smart thing to say is yes I know I'm going to be attacked, but I know what to do before an attack. I know what to do during attack to mitigate it, and I know what to do after an attack to clean up the mess right so that kind of uh, the security uh, design consideration should be there when you build a foundation for that right uh, and the other things are pretty uh, this one can you respond this one can you isolate threats can you provide real-time protection etc so again that's the security aspect some of these design considerations by the way you might be thinking yeah what's the big deal you know we know about this yeah they, this is we're not inventing new technology here it's a question of what are the ones design considerations that are more important than the other ones when you build a system for this collaboration is pretty easy it's very simple it's every room every pocket and um, you know every application so the ability to either whether you're on the move on a mobile phone to have the same seamless experience and people sometimes confuse collaboration with just me talking to you it's not that in in our world of IoT, it's a lot of machines sending data, bringing in one to other and then have the near real-time response in uh, critical industries, right? So that, that that is important. So that's uh, these are the collaboration care abouts that one should be bothered about, right? And then finally, automation and analytics. So this, this is very important, especially since IoT is taking off. Now, let's take examples. I like to talk with examples. If you look at energy industry, if any of you are electrical engineers here, you know that uh, there's power surges, okay? There's also another problem. Sometimes, let's say Las Vegas, it's very hot here. A lot of people, uh, you know, run their heater. The inductive load increases. So when the inductive load increases, the phase difference changes. And so you will cause cracks in the turbines where the power is getting generated. That's why usually in power stations, they just run synchronous motors to uh, add capacitive load to bring down the phase difference, right? So let's say there's a lot of demand and the inductive load suddenly increases. You have just milli or microseconds to shut down the power station before you'll notice micro cracks in the turbine. That can't wait for an administrator sitting there saying, oh yeah, I think I should shut it off, right? By the time it'll be in pieces. So the ability to collect the data and take near real time decisions and to do that to be able to take have the intelligence right at the edge to make that decision so now every decision should not data should not be transmitted all the way through the cloud to um, the main center the, the time won't be enough so Again, from an automation and analytics perspective, you have to design your system so that there's intelligence is spread out through your system. The ability to take decisions is spread out in the system. Certain decisions will be taken at the edge, certain at the aggregation layer, and certain uh, at the main um, you know, cloud or uh, central area. Another example, well, this is a case that Cisco has helped a uh, European um, train company where applying emergency brakes. So they have parameters, they have a box in the train uh, with when certain parameters that the track is constantly feeding information. If there is a problem in the track, there's a cut in the track, the brakes are applied based on a decision that's made on the box in the train. It doesn't have to come to the control center. So these are these are the kind of design considerations you need to think about. Okay? So now Cisco, that's what we've been doing. We've not we've built we already have a lot of things. We've take put, taken that together as well as we're building new capabilities to help, help uh, you know, take care of all of these things. So from connectivity and network, you guys already know we have a very big portfolio. We have uh, from ruggedized products to normal products, everything we can, we can connect every single extremity of the value chain, right? And the intelligence in our network is distributed across different places. And then security, again, for us, the guiding principle is not an afterthought. It is any device, endpoint, network, mobile, cloud. We have our portfolio. We've expanded our portfolio so that we can cover, secure all of these devices and uh, areas. Again, before, during, and after an attack, we talked about that. That's our security thing. Collaboration portfolio, most of you know really well, so I'm not going to go more deep into it. Um, automation. We're doing a lot of automation work and our guiding principle, again, is controller and policy-based. Why is this important? Let's take a retail situation. I need to add five more subway stores uh, in some place, right? 
How, is it going to be a truck roll? How long it's going to take it to come up? If there's consistent policy and I can just push everything, I, I should probably be able to bring it up in a few hours once everything is uh, physically networked in, right? So that, that sort of uh, being able to policy-driven uh, philosophy is very important. That's how um, we are. And it's also open so that you can extend it. I'm going to speed up a little bit, if you don't mind, so that Pradeep has enough time. I'm looking at the clock. Okay, analytics, we have... we. We have deep infrastructure te telemetry. That's marketing speak for what? It means every device that we make sends out a lot of data. Now, that's not necessarily a very good thing if you can't make information out of data. So we have the portfolio to take the data provide, uh, you know, and only filter out only the important one that needs to come to the next level and be able to take decisions. So you all uh, are probably familiar with iOS XR. What we've taken is we've taken uh, this one, the regular, uh, you know, our switches and we put in a hypervisor in there put it, and so that you can put in a VM which means you can install analytics uh, application in it and take those near decisions right and um, so that's that's the idea about the analytics portfolio so that's pretty much it that was a architectural design principle view if you ask me the question this is all fine but what is the product that you make right that is the, this is the slide this <coughs> Is the standard Cisco portfolio? You know that enterprise networks, data center, cloud, security, IoT, and all of that. We have all of those products, but that's all the infrastructure, right? Now, f I began the conversation talking about customer experience, workforce experience, and all of these things. Th these are outcome-based solutions. Software needs to be added on top to translate that to create uh, those experiences. And Pradeep is going to go a lot into detail about that. This is new for us. We just launched in Cisco Live Berlin. Pradeep has launched it. Uh, we launched customer experience and workforce experience solutions, and we're uh, working. We're launching business operations and city operations as well. Right. So this portfolio is going to increase. We are going to take our IoT portfolio, some of the vertical portfolio products and put it in so that the line of business guy who writes a check in many cases in these projects, they have relevant solutions. Developer environment, you guys know it. Basically, uh, you have to customize every vendor solution. So the ability to do that, Puppet Chef, Ansible Salt and all that stuff is here. API based. All of our products have API calls so you can write custom code and a partner ecosystem, worldwide partner, global support partner ecosystem so that once you buy from it, it works. This is, I'll leave the slide, I'm gonna, not going to talk about it, but I just took an example. Okay, how does it look in terms of the vertical? If it's a retail bank, these are the subset of solutions we have, again, to build a platform to make, build, this, build your strong foundation for digital transformation. So that's it. So we have tested proven architectures. You guys know that. Validated offer. So one other thing we've done is to make it easy for people to buy, we've bundled these into offers, added Cisco One pricing so that it's not confusing when there are so many products, and we have cross-tested products so that it's easy to uh, build these solutions.